Hello, uh, it's my immense pleasure and privilege to be seated with uh, Professor C. R. Balal, who is one of the doyens of surgery in southern India and possibly one of the most well-known surgeons and surgical teachers from Karnataka. I, um, if we could uh, uh, request him to spend some time with us and uh, talk about his uh, journey in surgery and welcome sir to this session and uh, we would like to uh, go into depths of uh, your how your career progress in surgery welcome thank you very much dr radha krishnan it's really indeed a great pleasure before i start i would like to congratulate you and dr vidya and the team the wonderful work you are doing as a part of LGS. Uh, to put it mildly, I think it's a revolution as far as surgical teaching in this country is concerned. Online teaching became popular thanks to COVID. It's a Bible that says something good always comes or evil. And this stunning example of something coming to a great evil, we got LGS, which is a, I'm sure a child of the COVID pandemic, but the child has grown into a beautiful, uh, you know, young person now spreading knowledge not only within the country but outside not only to postgraduates but also to practicing surgeons to that extent i'm indeed uh, i should congratulate you please continue to do the good work thank you sir uh, in fact uh, when dr radha krishna requested me to talk on a particular topic one of the topics i chose was that how uh, KMC, Customer Medical, because here KMC refers to Kilpock. My KMC is Customer Medical. How it was born, how it developed uh, from almost from day one. It has the distinction of being the first private medical college in the country. It also brought in the concept of self-financing. The person behind this entire venture was a very simple doctor from, I would say, a rural village of Udupi called Thonse. Dr. T. Madhopai or Dr. Thonse Madho Anantapai, TMA Pai, uh, did his MBBS for Madras Medi Medical College. We were then part of uh, Madras Presidency. South Kendra district, now comprising of Udupi, Dakshana Kannada, and Kasugo district, Kerala, had a single district and he finished MBBS, came back. And at the time, the Second World War was just over, I don't know what reason, he wanted to go to Japan. He thought the, you know, uh, Japan reached for doctors to complain to your patients. But his mother said, your country is more important, you stay back. He started on a very small scale in a place called Kalyanpur. It's a village, riverside, the primary community of fishermen. And when he did his practice, he found out one simple thing. Women were doing all the business of selling the fish, earning the money. But in the evening, all the money will be taken by the husbands and drinks. Hardly any savings. So he found that they could not even pay for his treatment. So how long his mother was saying, you must do service, our own place. It's true, but then how to survive? Then, man of great ingenuity, he told these fish women, We'll have a small collection. Those were the days when rupee had 16 annas. I don't know if you've seen anna coin. And each anna had four uh, paisas. Pavane, we used to call in Canada. And the metals were so expensive then. I still have the collection of a half anna coin with a round hole in the middle and only a thin circle of metal all around. A coin collector's decide. I mean, just saying the economy of the time. So he used to have a notebook and every lady was also given a notebook. At the end of the day, she'll bring and give four an S. He'll make an entry in his book, that lady will enter in her book. So over a period of time, he started collecting. Then he said when he had about 100 rupees, somebody did money for the school's education, 5 rupees, 10 rupees. He will give them and charge a marginal interest. This ultimately developed into the syndicate bank. And this particular project came to be known as Pygmy Project. 
and it continued as long as uh, Syndicate Bank was nationalized. And I know for these Kirani merchants, every day 10 rupees. One fellow will come and collect 10 rupees. At the end of the month, you have got three, uh, 300 rupees. Like that, that savings scheme worked up very well. That is the first venture into finance. Of course, at the same time, health. His next aim was education. The entire district had two degree colleges in Mangalore, St. Lucius, run by the, his fathers, government college run by the government, and then a ladies college, surprisingly, our ladies college is nearly 125 years old, St. Agnes, again started by the missionaries. I belong to a school called Christian High School, again run by the missionaries. South Kendra education and health, both were helped by the missionaries, coming from Germany, this, uh, what is that called, St. Basil group. So he thought we should have a college in Udupi. He started the first college in Udupi in 1949 in a small primary school building. It was called Mahatma Gandhi Memorial College. 1952, he thought of medicine. It's surprising for a man a, being an ordinary general practitioner, catering to the lowest level of population, thought of a self-financing scheme wherein Many deserving students who could not get admission into medical colleges in the country, whether he could help them. And because the first college was called Mahatma Gandhi, automatically the name that came to him was Kasturba. So, 1952, these ideas floated around in Udupi. People looked at it with a lot of suspicion. My father, very close friend, we are at one time, he has read my book, Big Landlords in Udupi. The amount of rice we used to grow needed a big, you know, 33 feet uh, long tower to store the rice. My father started a rice mill to get our own uh, paddy converted into rice. So much of rice we are growing. So a lot of people are consulted. Everybody said, difficult, difficult. Luckily, there was one good thing. Dr. Abhishetty was then the health minister in the Madras state. We belonged to Madras state at that time. So he discussed with Dr. Mad uh, Abhishetty. Dr. Abhishetty said, I will upgrade the hospital. That part, you can leave it to me. The government Van Luck Hospital had only about 200 beds. My grandfather passed his MBCM in the year 1911. That equaled MBBS. And he did the entire service in Madras government service. He retired as RMO working in that hospital. As a young child, I had gone and seen that hospital with the red stone building lot of this uh, gulmahar trees, plenty of compound. There's no place for the, all the relatives will sit under the shade of a tree and eat their lunch. I have those memories. He retired from the hospital. So the hospital concept was easy. Where to build? He at that time moved to a place called Manipal, which is four kilometers away from Udupi. And the big, very dense forest where tigers were present, hyenas were present, fox were present, separating Udupi from Manipal. Barren land, no trees, hard rock. He built a TB sanatorium because those days only treatment for tuberculosis was TB sanatorium. Fresh air, sunlight and what not. And he built a small residence for himself. So when these ideas brought up, a lot of people discouraged him. But somehow he Which went year there. was this, sir? Which, uh, 1952. 52. And what, what were you doing at that time, 52? And that's the advantage. See, I was studying my uh, intermediate, the, the present uh, PUC or the class 12 in St. Louis because my grandparents were staying in Mangalore, so I could move to uh, Mangalore. I had lost my mother when I was one year old. And my father married after a lapse of 13 years. So I moved to my grandfather's place. And uh, because that those days, uh, the Udupi College had only commerce and arts and in, 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 in science. So I joined there, but he went ahead. The trouble came in affiliation. If you remember, Dr. Lakshmi Madhuliar was then the Vice Chancellor of the Madras Industry. He tried his level, he brought influence, except uh, what I am told is Dr. Madhuliar was a man of very strict action and he wouldn't listen to uh, the political pressure or social pressure is beyond all that, so I have stored. Many trips to Madras, Nothing would happen. That was a big, big block for him. Why was uh, Dr. L. Mughler against the whole project? Exactly. Why? His, his concepts were very simple. 
only government can manage a medical college because hospital can never be self-sustaining. The cost of the hospital cannot be borne by private individuals because it has to be a charity hospital to teach the students. So his philosophy is very straightforward. He said, under no circumstances, I will allow a private person or a private group to start a medical school because it is beyond their capacity. On that concept, he said Madras University will never give finish. So it, it took about six months. By that time, you know, uh, I am a very deeply religious person. So, uh, God willing, a person from Belgaum happened to my uncle who was an ENT surgeon. He came and told Dr. Pai that Karnataka University Station in Dharwar, which was then part of Bombay Presidency, has a rule that it can give affiliation to any college in a Kannada speaking area. Hmm. So as a result of that, he went to Dharwad, convinced the university is happy because they didn't have medical school under their care. At okay. that, that time, the only college in the entire Mysore or Karnataka state was the Mysore Medical College. And sorry to say, it took 26 years before they could get recognition by the MCI. 26 years. Till then, people practicing there, uh, passing there could practice only within the state. Government-sponsored candidates could go abroad. A private person with the MBBS from MBBS could not, could not think of going to FR those days, only England, no? FRCS or MRCP, that was the thing for post-graduation. So with that hope, he turned back again. And he built a small anatomy a hall where anatomy dissections. And it happened that on 30th of June, 1953, the medical college inaugurated by the Swamiji's of Udupi. It was my luck that I had finished my one year, the second year was to start in July, I was in Udupi. It is a very, you know, those days, uh, monsoon you start from June, gone to September. And the winds in Manipal, you know, barren, absolute torrential rain. And I was in my dhoti, you know, those days wearing a trouser at school as unknown. All of us used to go in shorts only to even to colleges. My first pair of trousers came only after I joined the medical school. <laughs> yeah. hmm. But so, when you are doing uh, pre-university, you were planning to join no, MBBS. I see, this was a holiday. Purely out of curiosity, I went and attended the inaugural function. Hmm. There were students who were to join the first MBBS as well as their parents. And the way Dr. Pai talked, it really set uh, immense waves inside my mind. I am very fond of maths. And I came from a joint family where it was customary for the elder people to teach the youngsters. It was taken for granted. I learned from my uncle. In fact, we were running a school. And my at the age of four and a half years, my father said, you have got enough knowledge. He put me in the second stand. Because we are running the school, nobody could object. Mm -hmm. So when I joined the SLC, I had, as, uh, you know, not come to 15 years, I had to produce a medical certificate to take the SLC exam. Our own school till the fifth standard. Then I joined Christian High School. So out of curiosity, I went. As I said earlier, I was very fond of maths, and my idea was to do statistics and then try for the IAS. That was one aim I had. I was good in my studies, not the topper. We had one student uh, who was always a top man. He, because, you know, those days, to watch a cricket match, we were given holidays. You could go and encourage it. That was those days, and we used to play cricket, badminton, whereas that boy will sit and read, and it's taken for granted that he'll get the first try. There was no rat race. There's contentment in whatever marks. We had good marks, but because he got the first prize throughout from fourth standard SLC, he used to stand first in every subject, in every examination. Taken for granted that he'll get the first try. Nobody has bothered about it. But we are sure with good marks, we'll get into it. And so, I finished my MBBS in, I mean, intermediate in 1954, passed in May. Those days, we had to pay 3,000 rupees as initial donation, and the fees was 1,000 rupees. My father went and talked with uh, Dr. M. A. Pai, and then in Chesh Kannada, he said, uh, I have to give a seat to your son, no question at all. And by God's grace, I had very good marks also. I got about 428 out of 450, mass 100% and more than 90 in the remaining subject. Practical, I got almost nearly 50% physics and chemistry. So, no, path was open. 
bombshell came in the last week of May. MCA changed the rules. Till then, you may not be aware, students join a medical college had six months of what is called pre-registration course. Those who had done mass physics and chemistry could also apply for medicine and go through the registration course, learn some biology and then move the medical stream. I had already applied for the college but this rule came as a bombshell because I had passed my mass physics chemistry for today. Uh, my father said, he was also impressed with Dr. M. Pai. I think it's a good branch. And my grandfather was a doctor. Two of my uncles were doctors. One of the first ENT surgeons certainly in Balgaon. My mother's elder sister husband. Another uncle was a very prosperous GP in Karkala, a small town. And the way society is to respect those doctors left a deep impression in me. In fact, I have seen when my uncle came down on the road, people will come and touch his feet on the road. You know, something unimaginable. So, plus Dr. Pai's influence, right, uh, initially a lot of discussion. You know, those days we had very little. The parents decided as to what branch you could join. But why uh, weren't you thinking of joining a government medical college? Why should you? To, because of your excellence, you could uh, jolly well join government medical college. Why would you experiment with an experimental medical school? There are two reasons. One is we were big landlords, but uh, the land legislation took away most of our lands in the hands of tenants. Suddenly, our financial status came down considerably. Number two, I had a house in Mangalore, I had a house in Manipal, so I am able to pay. So, no question of staying in the hostel. There, those expenses were completely ruled out. My expense was only uh, fees only. Two kilometers, I used to walk three kilometers to the bus stand, then take the city bus and go to Manipal, come down, walk again three meters home. Same thing in Mangalore. Two kilometers to the college, have a dry lunch, and then again walk back to. So the only expense was the fees. I want a home atmosphere. Whatever yeah. said and then, you know, because those days, we, I belong to a very orthodox Brahmin community. And all my dad, my uncles, everybody stayed in a SKD, that's the Dakshin Kannada Brahmin's hostel. That mess was acceptable. Going to a hotel was taboo. And we had to follow that orthodoxy. So with my grandfather's house, I didn't have that problem. So I did apply for the Madras medical, medical College. And to tell, I don't know for what reason. I got the application form two days after the last date is over. Whether it's intentional <laughs> or not, I don't know. Because th that was the time Kamara was the chief minister and a communal GO. You might not have heard of it. Kamara said the number of seats will depend upon the percentage in your community. Brahmin formed three percent. So there are six seats. 1954 I am talking. Many students got in. 55, Kamaraj brought in the communal geo. A.B. Shetty was health minister. Again, off print. Lot of my bond friends moved into Mother Medical College. I don't know, heard of H.D. Uh, Ballal. He was a cricketer. He played for the state cricket. Ranji Trophy team. They all moved into first bed, Mother Medical College. Satyavan and they were all. Satyavan, yeah, yeah. Is he a Canadian? No, no. No, he joined in Madurai. Mm -hmm. So, all this, they could, he couldn't get them into Stanley and also right. he put them into Madurai because of the health minister. But my advantage because of the uh, home facilities, I took the risk. In fact, I was told by a very well meaning friend, you may be forced to stay in. I said, I'm happy. M MBBS degree may be enough for me. Which batch were you? So, so, 1953, I attended the inauguration. 54, I passed my MBB, uh, intermediate with mass physics chemistry. Hmm. So, because the new MCA rule, I had to do biology for one year. 54, 55, four lectures in the whole year, plus tuition classes. I did not miss a single cricket match. None. At that time, I read, I am an avid reader. The 14 volumes of uh, Swami Vivekananda's uh, Mayavati edition biography. Very heavy reading, but it's worth it. Today, 15th volume has come. It really, you know, it's very inspiring to read. At that age, especially, Vivekananda has a lot of influence on you. I had so much of reading time. So I finished biology again with very good marks. And I, again, my father went and met Dr. T. M. A. Pai. 
And he said, surely let him come. Okay. First day I went and saw. I find a name, K. Ratnaraja Ballal. My name is not there. He came and told me that. Who is there? I said, I don't know. There is one Ballal, but he is not Ramakrishna Ballal. Dad went up. Those days, no mobile, nothing. No, Went up all the way to Manipal. Came up, I was very busy. He said, I have given one Ballal a seat. It is your son only. Then my father said, sorry, my son's name is Ramakrishna and not, not Ratnaraj. Okay, tomorrow's list. Second day I go, you may not believe it. I find a name H. Raghus Chandra Bhallal. <laughs> my name is not there. Hundred seats are almost full. I was in real panic. I'd give away, no, no, by that time Madras medical medicines or, or admissions are over. I didn't know what to do. Luckily, we had a GP called Sundaram Pai. In those days, GPs were family, you know, everything, friend, philosopher, guide, everything. My uncle went and met him. And he gave a letter, Mr. T. A. Pai, later became minister. He was a Dr. Pai's cousin. And he said, this is a family I know very well. He said, sorry, I already put two ballas, but there's a third ballal now. <laughs> so, I was one of the last entries. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then I found that I am a Brahmin Balal, Raghuchandra Balal is a Bant Balal, and Ratnaraj Balal is a Jain Balal. Okay. Not only Balal was common, R was common. Ratnaraja, Ramakrishna, Raghuchandra. Okay. So we are called CRB, HRB, KRB. Of course, later on we, uh, we are called by other pet names. I don't want to mention that. <laughs> Each one had a particular pet name. So, we were three Bhallals, belonged to three different communities, which almost cost me a seat in the medical school. But later on, uh, things moved on. Now, at that time, the tuberculosis sanitary converted library, anatomy block and the physiology, that's all, and two hostel blocks and one converted house for the ladies. And Colonel Mangeshra, who had just then retired the principal of medical was our first dean. He taught us anatomy. Advantages today I realize that he taught more applied being a surgeon. He taught more applied anatomy than pure anatomy. That came to my rescue when I was doing my MS. So much later in my life, I joined I come to life much later when I joined a new medical school. There were no PGs. There are no UGC one because first year. So I offered to take class for anatomy, but you know, sometimes ego, I was not allowed. I still believe that surgeon should teach anatomy, physician should teach physiology, because it becomes much more interesting in the hands of surgeons. But I've got not tell. And learnt under Colonel Mangeshra. And then there's one Dr. Goodbole. I don't know if you've seen the anatomy museum. It's one of the best museums in the world, they said. Anatomies. Of course, today with virtual and uh, all the re reality, it has lost its value. Was those days the way he spent, spent all his time in uh, dissecting and uh, mounting specimens. So this, uh, from our younger days, we keep hearing that uh, KMC Manipal is one of the best-run medical colleges. And uh, how did it happen? Because uh, uh, you need to set down uh, uh, a culture of uh, excellent education, which should have excellent teachers, which will attract excellent students. Where did you get these excellent teachers from? Dr. Pai's greatest, uh, I would say, advantage was that he was extremely careful in choosing teachers. The first set of teachers were all people who retired, 90% from Madras. Dr. Karan Mangeshra, Dr. DSIR. The professor surgery he taught me, of course, he died very early due to MI. He had just retired from Madras. I remember, he scored a special sign for doctors, and you could cross the red light with that. That's how you identify his car, Dr. DSIR. He used to take surgical pathology on Sunday mornings, no attendance, and whoever wants to attend, at the end of the class, coffee and water at his cost. And all those things helped me when I did my MS. Detailed surgical pathology, Sunday mornings, 10 to 12. 
out of 100, about 60, 65 is to come. Most girls, of course, with the apologies. Girls will not miss classes. Boys are the one who cut classes. Girls always, whoever is teaching, they Even will Even on run. Sundays? On Sunday mornings. Right. Sunday OPD, compulsory attendance for students. When I became a teacher, Sunday no patience. I used to take up those topics which they learnt in the third year and forget. Burns, shock, hemorrhage, electrolyte imbalance. All those things is Sunday morning because Sunday morning students will come. I didn't want to waste their time. So they were known as Sunday topics. So because for quite some time I had Sunday OPDs. So in my unit. So these are Sunday topics. So Dr. Uh, from Madras, I'm telling you, Dr. Ishwaraya, who was the author of the Pharmaca text, we read David Ishwaraya and Guru Swami. Three authors. He was one of the authors. And Dr. K. L. Jacob. Forensic medicine, very interesting. I don't know. He came from Madras. I was told his lectures on rape used to attract students not only from medical college, engineering college, law college, everybody used to come at same time. So I'm that's what I was told. Cree, Dr. Bhagya, my Purushottam, came from Andhra, Vaisak Medical College. She was very fond of boys. She was very strict with the girls. Because most girls used to move to gynecology those days. Boys hardly. I got 84% in uh, OB gynec, sitting in New Record in the University. She called me. So, Madam, I have read that subject, but uh, with due apologies, Pallal, you must go and do your MD in gynec. Madam, very sorry, Madam. I am somehow, it's difficult to want. Uh, she shouted at me, such a good, she got such good marks, you don't want to take her. So, and then from Bombay, Dr. Kopika retired. There's one group. The second group was youngsters who were brilliant gold medalists. Dr. Mahadevan's son, Srinivasan, he passed away two years ago. I worked, he was my mentor also. Mahadevan retired as the principal of Medical College. Dr. K.P. Ganeshan, he was a uh, medalist from uh, Bombay University. Dr. A.V. Baliga, a man from South Kendra, was the most famous surgeons in Bombay those days. In fact, one block in Manipal is known as A.V. Baliga Memorial Block. He belonged to a South Kendra GSB community. He sent Dr. Ganeshan. So he was very, very careful. And one good thing, never bother caste or creed. We do apologies. Medical colleges, many of them in this country today, if you started by a particular community, preference is given to people of that community, irrespective of their uh, competency. Whereas Dr. Timmy Pai always looked at competency. So, these teachers uh, coming from uh, these uh, big cities, metros, why will they uh, uh, travel all the way to a godforsaken place uh, which has got no any infrastructure and what attracted them and what made them stay there? Were they paid handsomely, were they taken care of or is that love for teaching? Two or three things. One, Dr. Vailiath was a classmate of TMFI. That worked a lot. Second, uh, this I think you should have impressed again and again. That is genuine passion for teaching. Like, luckily, Manglu education wise was very good. See, people now think of children's education. Manglu by those standards are excellent education institutions. So those youngsters who came, their children could get the best of medical education. And a sense of novelty, you know, human mind, basically there's a little bit of curiosity is always in the back of the mind. There is a private college coming up. Let us see how it works. That kind of challenge has brought a lot of people. And in about a decade, we had established a name. See, within nine years, our college got recognized not only by the MCA, but also the General Medical Council of North Great Britain. So people should go for higher studies to UK straight away. So it attracted that. One, these people came. They were able to get some of their good students also down to Mangalore and Manipal. See, Manipal grew up much later than Mangalore. Initially, focus was developing the Mangalore setup. One of the uh, biggest um, roadblocks to the most of the private medical colleges these days is a hospital patients OPD, and uh, you know, uh, hospitals have to be free for patients. Uh, did uh, Dr. Pai face this problem and how did he build a hospital where patients came in and where did he learn from? I'm coming to that. The idea was to have only the first one and a half years in Manipal. Then we moved to Mangalore. 
Mangalore by that time had a 500 bed Vanlak hospital and 200 bed uh, women's and children's hospital called Lady Cushion. Thanks to Dr. A.B. Shetty, hospital is well developed. It has a modern OT complex. But the problem was building. College did not have building. We started classes in insurance building, we called Popular Insurance, later became LIC. Three floors of the building rented out. And one extra classroom was in a syndicate bank building. Surprising. Mm -hmm. We had to move. Vanlock Hospital those days scattered to the entire South Kendra, North Kendra, Kurg, North Kerala. Plenty of patients. But there's a private hospital. No, government hospital. Vanlock, okay. That's why this is the first private public corporation. Mm -hmm. In addition to being the first self financing, where I said 3,000 rupees de deposit and 1,000 rupees fees, the government hospital provided plenty of clinical opportunities. All the teachers working in the college were appointed honoraries. The government used to have assistant surgeons posted in each unit to look after the medical legal work and to do some of the rest of the diet sheet signing, all those things they used to do. Honorary used to work, but no honorary took it upon himself or herself to neglect the hospital. In fact, I should say, Venlock Hospital is one of the best government hospitals in the entire state. We had three surgical units, three medical units, two gynec units. Of course, one anesthesia and only one. Pediatrics came uh, after I finished. Till then, general physician by rotation used to go and look after the children. The first pediatrician was appointed only uh, four or five years later. So, Manipal did not have any clinical setup at all. Entire clinical setup was in Mangalore. And the chiefs or the associates never bothered to neglect one another. Although salary was very meager, private practice was allowed, and a group of private hospitals came up in Mangalore with the help of the specialist on this. Till then, only one Father Mullah's hospital, a surgeon and one private surgeon has started a clinic. Otherwise, most of the consultants came from the college and they had their own clinics and they were allowed prior practice. They could admit their patients, but not at the cost of the government. My chief used to come, midnight you call him, he will come. Associates also used to come regularly. I'll continue a part little later. Now, I finished my first MBBS, came and joined uh, of course, I was a top ranker, I got the top, uh, first uh, rank in university, and joined second MBBS, excellent teachers again. Our pharmacology professor, Dr. Ishwaraya, again one more point. There's only one boy, hostel captain, to over 50 students. The rest of them I put in big old uh, bungalows. Most of them belonged to Roman Catholics. And they had rent out a uh, PG accommodation. This professor will first go and visit the restroom. And the restroom is not clean. He'll shout at you know. He starts with the rascal and then go down the ladder. The rest of the words are unprintable or unmentionable, even in the classroom. And the same way, he'll go on to the landladies also. They were scared of. He'll visit them at the most unexpected time. That was the kind of bond that developed between teacher and student. I don't know. I, to my mind, our. KMC Mangalore has the best of student-teacher bonds. Recently, they had a reunion in Erkat. All people were in their late 70s, early 80s. But they managed to meet quite a lot of them. Again, they invited, I said, sorry, I cannot come. Anywhere you go, they bond. And that started from those days. Attachment to the students was great. So I finished my second MBA, passed my final MBA again. I was a topper and therefore I got the TMAP gold medal. That was the only one gold medal. Today there are a lot of gold medals. There is only one gold medal for the best of gold strength. I lied on the same breath. My daughter, son's daughter, Vaishnavi, has managed to get the same gold medal 62 years later. It was God's will to keep me standing. She would have got the gold medal, but she repeated my performance. The degree is awarded by the Karnataka, University of Mumbai. University. Mumbai? No, Karnataka University. Dharwar, I told you, you no. Know, ah, okay. Affiliation is Karnataka University. 
Ah, okay, okay. Later on, when Karnataka was formed, affiliation switched go to Mysore Institute. Now I finished my internship, my first posting was pediatric. I'm very fond of children. Pediatrics. Previous year a student, next year on duty. There's one lady doctor for the entire 200 beds, including labor, theater, children's ward, everywhere. And she'll all the time busy in the LT. Children will come, hyperpyrexia, dehydration, vomiting, diarrhea. First night, three children died. I went home crying. You know, you've never seen uh, such young babies dying, you know, mothers crying. And every day to day, six weeks of posting, I don't know how many children we lost. I used to tell my wife, I'm sorry, that uh, we won't have 12 children. She was always shouting at me, I'm so fond of children. I used to tell her, we'll have 12 children. Mm -hmm. But seeing these children die, I said, pediatrics is not meant for me. Moved under Professor Ganeshan, one of the best teachers we ever had. Three months working with him almost made me decide that I will take up uh, medicine as a posi subject. I should say one more thing. We had a pro professor of pathology called Dr. Banerjee. He said, don't make up your mind about specialty until you finish your internship. Don't take too early a decision. Go through the whole mill, then you'll be able to decide. My last posting was with Professor M. Paper as then the head of the department of surgery. Six weeks under him. There was one assistant surgeon who always worked in rural areas, had no idea at all. First time you got to assist chief. Madam Purushottam, you are one second late in taking out the artery forces, you'll get a knuckle on your uh, hit on your knuckle. Very straight, she was quite fast. You can't, I won't blame her. So, takal, you'll get one. So, with Professor Pai, same thing. What did I do? I didn't know all these things. Quietly, one day, took one artery force, put it in my pocket, went home. Whole night I was doing opening, closing, opening, closing. Morning I was very happy. My cousin sister was there. She also said, Hey, you look like a good surgeon. I say, so, so nicely the left. Because left, right hand, you're holding retractor. Left hand, you have to do that. No thumb and little finger. Practice. Went back, big galata in the OT. One artery force was missing. <laughs> Who knew that artery force was being counted? All the sisters are running about. Their idea, somebody has left one artifice inside the abdomen. Who? I thought, gone. If my chief or our DM was a retired army man, very strict. I thought, gone. Life is gone. What to do? Call the sisters. Come on, come on, let me see. They put in bunches of 12 and tie a knot. So I said, give me one bundle. I said, the girls were all counting. I put, her, put it back in the He said, what is your count? The 12, count it again, 12. Big relief on the Probably one nurse suspected that I had taken out, but dare not tell the truth. Those were the days because there's nobody, in, no PGs, no, it's not, nobody. You are the only person next to chief. So, three and working under him, one thing that struck me, young minds are very impressionable minds. People come with a peptic perforation. They are so rigid that you can't even make them lie down. Sometimes you have to examine them standing, you know, the rigidity is so much. But you close the perforation, eight days, the man goes on walking, you know, it's such an impressive turnout. People come with peritonitis, pus all around, and the only antibiotic we had was streptopensilin, chloromycin, tetracycline. With that also, some people survived. I always say, some people survived despite us, not because of us, that's a different story. Anyhow, that dramatic improvement turned me towards surgery. And I had a friend who was working in UK and I corresponded with him those days, NHS needed Indian doctors. And we had a very good English knowledge because trained in missionary colleges. English was excellent. So preference came for KMC had already had a name because two of previous batches people had gone to UK and he told me you can get a job in NHS straight away. Everything was ready. I was finishing in December 60 my internship. Professor Pai said, before you go to UK, work with me for one more year. We'll be more conversant. There's a category called senior house surgeon. You must be aware of it. It's not gone now. So, KR Balad, both of us joined together during a senior house surgency. One more research professor came from UK called Dr. Yogesh Pai. He was really keen on teaching. And at the end of one year, we could do most of simple operations. December 61, I was ready to go to UK. Professor M. Pepe called me one day. Balad, citizen. I'm going to make a surgeon in Mangalore. 
I am going to start PG courses in March. He was a member of the MCA, Central Council. So it's easy to get MCA permission. So March 62, six of us joined for the first postgraduate course in the whole state. Mm. Because Mysore Medical did not have postgraduation. Bangalore Medical started only in 1955 and had not started. So 62, one person from Madras Medical College, Cheshadri, he is now in Bangalore retired. And four of us, because we had done senior ascendancy, got one year exemption. And we were the first batch of postgraduates, 62 to 64. During that time, they went all out to change. Dr. D.S. Iyer, with due apologies, came with the typical Indian mentality those days of doing everything from skin to skin. No chance is given to your, your associate, maybe a double FRCS, makes no difference. Skin to skin, he'll do. He must have removed more than 10,000 stomachs in uh, time because those days treatment for diodin also was partial gastric. Mm -hmm. So we got trained in the difficult diodinums first. So when came to malignant, it became much easier for us. All the scar diodinums, closure, and what do you use? Chromic adgut and thread. None of the materials had come. Closure is chromic adgut. So burst abdominals are very common. And my professor said, but there's no peritoneal but I'll only burst, close it, okay, it's all right. Like that's the approach. So we are trained to the extent that the DMO called Professor MP by one day and said, how can you allow the students to do such a major surgery? It's a district hospital. If something happens, I am held responsible. After that, MP Pai said, put my name first, then you operate. Every legal records, MP Pai, C.R. Bala. In fact, MP Pai will be sitting and reading Hindu and very fond of Vedas and all. He'll be sitting and, and he learned Bengali at the age of 45 to read Tagore in the original. That kind of uh, teacher we had. Really? Yeah. <laughs> 45 year old man learned Bengali to read Tagore in the original. And he gave us a free hand. So, we did nephrectomy, cholecystectomy, gastrectomy, every day and Professor Srinivasan introduced G.J. Vagotomy. That became the, the standard. And barium screening, do apologies. I give barium, press tenderness, your nulls, half the time negative laparotomies. Very common those days, very common negative laparotomies. But we are trained. G.J. taught us anastomosis, hernia taught us uh, dissection. To my mind, that was the best training postgraduates can have. Because the problem is anastomosis. The other thing is the dissection. Hernia, unless you are in the proper tissue planes, you can't do a proper hernia. And anastomosis, GG every day, the minimum three GGs commonly. So at the end of your uh, three year period, anastomosis became absolute all hands on, of course. And where you rotated through any other institutions during your surgery. Right. There is no pediatric surgery, the new, new year surgery. We did neurology. not have any specialist. Dr. Madhava Nambiar, son of KK Nambiar, is a surgeon here. His son. He came when, I was, when we were in the final year, he was the first man who has specialized in pediatric surgery in UK. So he used to do herniotomies and uh, Ramstead. Till then, we were doing Ramstead also, we used to do herniotomy also. On the other hand, extradurals, we had to drain the hematoma. And my chief had worked with a thoracic man in UK. Our unit specialized in thoracic surgery. Ivor Lewis is very common. Mm -hmm. I have done lobectomies. Okay. My professor has done a few mitrals using those tufts dilator, mm -hmm. which today looks so crude and whatnot. And uh, we have done pericardectomy because we are constrictive pericardectomy. TB was quite common those days. And uh, drainage of per pericardectomy, all those things. MB capsules of the liver was extremely common and bursting producing cutaneous fistula. You won't see such things now. Head to toe, everything, growing toenail, onto extra hematoma, everything was except I. ENT, unfortunately or fortunately for me, the person was not very keenly interested. So all uh, malignancies I used to go and help them. Faringo, laryngectomies and all those things. Uh, I used to go and help them. And uh, we had a uh, orthopedic surgeon mm -hmm. who has started doing anterolateral decompression for tuberculosis, but he wanted a man to open the thorax. Our thorax surgeon is quite busy, so I used to go and help him out, open the thorax, let him do the and then go and close the thorax. So I said, man, I don't know, jack of all trades, maybe, man, I don't know, master of none, none, none I don't know. Anyhow, exposed to all experts. Where did you have uh, 
time for teaching and time for I'm reading. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. 64 I passed. Again, I attempted to go to UK. Uh, circumstances. One particular staff member who had just joined a few months earlier was absolutely had no practical experience. He put a sigma scope and he called the PGs and showed the spleen. Without realizing that the PG said it's not the way to look at the spleen. So that incident. Spleen from within the colon or He perforated the perforated. colon and he was showing the spleen with all you know glee, happiness. He didn't realize that he had perforated the colon. So he was thrown out. He was the only staff member thrown out from the institution. And Professor Pai said, there's a vacancy, you stay back. You know, he was like a father figure to me. Right from senior oxygency, uh, nearly three internship, senior oxygency, PG, I worked in the same unit. He was like a father figure. When he said something, I couldn't say no. And six months later, of course, got married and then ideas of going abroad slowly disappeared. And this is important. None of us sacrifice teaching for the sake of practice. Whatever time devoted for postgraduates or undergraduates is always given time. And you see, you know, maybe I am an exception because I am addicted, you can get at teaching also. In between operations, I will show them instruments. I will discuss them every point in the operation table. And finally, as students were made to stay, male students, we didn't have a competition of girl students. Because they never see a burst apprentice otherwise, all of us operate in the evening or night. So they used to stay with me and then became family friends. At the end of three months posting, we used to have a unit party where ch uh, wife, children, I still remember Suma with whom I am staying, she was a four year old girl. There is a boy from America of Hispanic origin. He's, he was posted in our unit, a boy called David. So David sat with my daughter who was then four years old. Do you know any Kannada rhymes? She said yes. And she started singing Bekke, Bekke. This boy had learned Kannada and sang Kannada rhyme because he says to talk with the patients, I must learn Kannada. He sang the Kannada nurse rhyme with this girl. That was the kind of relationship students had the staff. And staff reciprocated. There were, of course, there were black sheep. I had to accept there were black sheep. Majority made sure that hospital patients were well cared for. Students were looked after for, despite having a fairly fabulous practice. Because college, I retired at the salary of 4,000 rupees. After three decades, I started with 600 rupees, climbed up to 4,000 rupees. Later on, Manipal, they thought of developing their own institution. Okay. So they built up a hospital step by step. Dr. Ramesh Pai, who was then retired as a direct medical service, Andhra Pradesh. He came with process surgery. He was MP Pai's uh, Samandhi. Okay. So he came there, developed the surgical department, and slowly it came up. 69 onwards, they started admitting, uh, completing the entire course in Manipal. Mid 70s, they started anatomy and physiology in Mangalore. So we had two medical colleges. But the outside world, you say Kasturba, they think of Manipal. You have to tell them there is a separate Kasturba college in Mangalore. It, that information is not available worldwide. Mm -hmm. They always associate the word Kasturba with Manipal. Yeah, that's right. Today, Manipal has overtaken Mangalore much. Yeah. Because yeah. they have developed all specialities. The center How did that happen? Why did that happen? Because their focus was to develop Manipal. Oh. In fact, uh, Mangalore was not given due attention earlier. Focus was on, only last two, three decades they developed Mangalore. They have got a corporate hospital in Mangalore. But till then, focus entirely on Manipal. Specialities came to Manipal first, then only to Mangalore. Because the government hospital is so in constraints. Mm -hmm. Equipment wise, everything. So all the specialities came to Manipal first. You had a lot of uh, patients from Kerala? Is Plenty. That? In mm -hmm. fact, North Kerala, our prior practice entirely from the Gulf is of North Kerala. North Kerala you know, every able-bodied Muslim male is in the Gulf. Construction, low level, not high level. But they were the one, their loyalty is 100%. And they large families. 
We operate on one, he'll bring ten others. Okay. I told you, you know, day for yesterday I got a call. <laughs> So, and Benla Hospital, we had an equal number of beds on the floor to the night, 24 beds in the ward, 48 was minimum patient. Admission day, sometimes the central aisle also will be filled with the floor beds, 30, 32 admissions. PGs, you sit and write case sheets till early morning. By the time professor came, you have to get ready. Of course, blood counts and all are not available so early, but at least clinical presentation have to be ready. OT list will start at 9 a.m. in the morning, gone till 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. No canteen. Mm -hmm. And when I used to do Ivor Lewis, after the resection, I'll have a cup of tea and then go to the anastomosis part. In between, we have done even cervical anastomosis also. During that period of time, uh, have you heard of any stalwart surgeons from Andhra? from uh, Madras Medical College. Stanley must also be there by then. When I was in the final year, it, despite having such an excellent staff, professor brought three eminent teachers from the country, a visiting process. Each of them spent one week with, me, with us. One was Dr. Prapul Sen from Bombay, cancer hmm. surgeon. Second was Dr. B. Shankaran from New Delhi. He was in South Dajan. Okay. He retired as the Director General of Shankaran finished the FRCs in Canada. Six months he worked in anatomy in Manipal. I was a student. Hmm. And the point is I was taught more by surgeons than anatomists throughout my okay. first MB. Hmm. Later on he came a visiting professor. Hmm. And Dr. P. K. R. Warrior from Trivandrum, one of the yeah. best teachers you have seen. Right. All of them spent one week. Okay. And I could make out that when you meet a new teacher, some angles which have not been covered, that made me go as a faculty member whenever CMA was called for. That was the prime. I said, I have learned. They were all in their late 60s and all. But they were all young and, you know, their zeal. So I said, whenever I was called, where I saw there's hardly any place where I had not gone for teaching, including Chennai. I went to Kaimuttur, Kalika, Trivandrum. Of course, Madurai and Trivandrum, I don't take uh, being a religious person, I said, because uh, Minakshra Mohan, my tr trustee was my student, so he could get in there. In Madurai Padnam temple, I first go to the temple and then only go for the PG class. And I go as examiner for MBBS, same case I'll keep, I'll call the PGs after that, have a cup of tea and, and discuss those cases till late in the evening. They all went bring cervical, you know, I said, start with the hydrocele, go with the, you know, you know me too well now. I start with fundamentals always. So we are aware of salvers and they used to come. Later when I became a staff, Manipal started having CME. Then we used to get a Charas Chandra used to come from Chennai. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Raman Kuti from Kaimathur. Uh, Shrikand used to come from Bombay. And then uh, BML Kapoor, Kaushik, Vicky Kapoor. They all used to come. From. That's why I became friends with a lot of people outside. Because Manipal CME. We also had CME in Mangalore also occasionally. You were aware of Stalwarts. Sharashandra has come several times to Manipal. Mm -hmm. You were aware of Stalwarts. I have attended his classes. Such a wonderful teacher. A wonderful teacher. No very, question. very knowledgeable person. And he very has humble. His knowledge in everything, not just surgery. No, no. But, but very much down to earth. Very, very, very much down to earth. Mm -hmm. That's what I liked about him. In fact, Shrikande came. Those are days where he used to have slides now. Mm -hmm. So I used to have a, a, pair, a pack of cards with me. She can be so impressed, can I borrow this car? I said, yes, you can take it. So we became very close friends. Now, uh, did you focus on any part of surgery or you mean surgery? By force, two things became a main focus. One is abdomen, especially uh, uh, duodenal ulcer, gastric ulcer, carcinoma stomach. Carcinoma colon is very uncommon those days. Tropical pancreatitis came to be recognized more by accident than design. Because unless they had calcification, it was not seen in X-ray. Barium meals were not useful. So most diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis was made on the table. And we learned over a period of time lateral uh, pancreatic gymnastomy. Uh -huh. more by, okay. uh, and uh, I devised a new procedure, which of course it did have a large number. I resected the whole body and tail code out all the uh, stones from the head, mobilize the whole head, made a, uh, mobilize, did a cocker, mobilize the duodenum, made a transfer incision, 
and switched over the pancreas onto the duodenum to make a physiological pancreatic duodenal anastomosis. I presented a paper also on this, mm -hmm. but number was not very large. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought it was the most physiological operation you could do. Of course, by later on, phrase other things came later on. I'm talking before that. That, that inquisitive mind is needed for a surgeon, according to me. As I read somewhere, first 10 years you follow what your teacher taught you because you want the patient to go back vertical and not horizontal. You have to be a safe surgeon. After 10 years, you have to devise. Uh, I'm not boasting. Those days, every prostate means two stages. First stage, do a supravivic. Second stage, you take out the prostate. By that time, there's so much rigidity. You put your finger in, despite all the relaxants of spinal, it is so difficult. So one particular fit patient, without telling my chief, I put a Foley catheter, waited for six days, all the parameters are normal. I took out the prostate, I found it so much, 100% easier. And you put two retractors, you can see the bleeding points. You could catch them. And those days, no quarter in one lakh hospital. We had to put a, a sort of, a, put a needle across, a ligature with the cat cut. After I did, I put a Foley catheter. Of course, safety sake, I put a surprise. Then I told my chief. He looked at me. Balal, you are quite bold, I said. I said, sir, I should apologize to you. I didn't take your permission. Sir. <laughs> But when my associate wanted to start doing selective ergotomy, mm -hmm. highly selective ergotomy, I encouraged him. I said, I'm going to come with you. Any complication, my name, but you do the operation. I became very liberal. Having worked with chiefs who were a little rigid, I became very liberal in my As long as the patient's safety is concerned, let us try new things. But those were the days when there was no ICU, there were no intensivists, and the anesthetists also would not stay back. And you do Ivor Lewis and you do McEwen's. How will take care of the patient? 24 hours as PGs, we are sat with the patient. By the side? No, by the side. Day and night? Day and night, by rotation. I have made final students sit with I tell them, this is an operation which you will not see. Sit with the patient. They will take rotation till the evening, one fellow will sit every 15 minutes, check their beep, etc. Of course, we had some mortality. I am not saying the mortality is compared, but quite a lot of patients were sick. Do right from the internship, this 24 hour duty was uh, routine. In right. fact, we did not have a canton. I must say this about my professor. I had a uh, classmate called Urala. He was a good eater. You know, not like we can manage, so, but he used to have. So one day, evening, professor comes, pulls out oranges from each pocket, and Urala, I know you're a good eater, you're on duty, eat these oranges because there's no canton. That's, I'm just saying this is a bond the teachers had to the students. So, post of care was entirely the responsibility of the operating team. There are no extra hands, no intensivists. And as that is, of course, my cousin brother was went out of the way. He used to take extra care of patients, even the government hospital. Pressure them. Once the PG comes, and they will hand over. In fact, one incident, uh, which was reported in the lay press two decades later. There's a doctor's father with a small ulcer and this happened about two years after I passed out. Lateral, I wanted a uh, partial uh, rosectum under local. Son is a doctor. He said, no, 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 my father will not tolerate uh, local, give GA. So, when not hospital, GI I told them, and I said, this is a doctor's father. But of course, he put the tube. Went back with the apologies. I was sitting and having coffee. One PGO just joined. Right? My 20 minutes procedure, how much does it take? I run, just put some uh, mattress switches to stop the bleeding, deep on it. Because the doctor saw it standing by the side. I said, I'll put this one. Extubated, vomited. Entire content went down the cricket. Cardiac arrest. I didn't even put on a glove. I took a knife, opened the left chest, started pumping with my hand, recovered, survived for 22 years after that. That made a big incident there. And worst, there's one side of the coin, it became so popular. At the same time, I had posted a case for uh, skin grafting under local in a private hospital. It's 
small also take of it the Tibetan is to that number set. You know, everything we are to ourselves. This one guy, under look at take your infant. And this man is weaved into the minor roti at a cardiac arrest. Two days later, the most famous hotel was this and man yours was also. So now I would lens. The chief of that hospital is sitting having coffee, neighbor table two people are talking to each other. The discussion goes on like this. We have heard of surgeons killing patients after surgery. We have a new surgeon in Mangalore. He posts a case for operation, the patient dies. He comes and tells me, Sir, this is what they I said, what to do? They are telling the truth. So it's a small place. The good news spreads fast, the bad news also spreads equally fast. One of my colleagues never used to come for night rounds. It is well known. So they say, don't go to him because he never comes. Another colleague of mine was fond of alcohol and a very stinking rich family comes home one day to me and says, till 7 p.m. we are his patient. After 7 p.m. we are your patient because we can't go to him. <laughs> you, see, you know, you can get away with all this in a uh, big metro, but not in a small place. And Bangalore is a small town those days. So it's managed entirely by postgraduates and no distinction is made because they are government patients. In fact, uh, I shouldn't say this, many of us used to pay bus fare and train fare at the time of discharge to those patients who couldn't afford it, send them home and tell them, so we have no money, okay, otherwise they'll, they'll occupy one more day and pay money for the train fare railway and send them back home. But, but the advantage is, I could get into so much of private work thanks to experience I had in a government hospital. That's the greatest benefit. You would experiment much more in a government level. I would not do Ivor Lewis in a private hospital, certainly not. Having done Ivor Lewis in government, I was bold enough to do that in private sector. To that extent, government hospital definitely helped me. So we always believe that uh, patients, the students have to pay a lot of money to get into KMC Manipal. Uh, so, and we have seen, presently also, we, we kept hearing till recently that uh, patients, uh, students who pay money, you know, they don't obey the teachers, they don't do night duties, they take life easy, and the teachers cannot command them. Is that true? This is very hard to ask my son, because things have changed a large extent. Of course, Dr. Pai initially thought of stopping donation at the end of 10 years. You know, that was only a dream. Year by year, inflation picked up. And the other thing that happened to us was, paddy prices did not go up at the rate of inflation. So we became the, those who grow Araka in the southern part of the district. Araka nut, the rates were going. Agriculture is paddy alone suffered a lot. Initially, money was not the criteria. Unfortunately, when the self-finance uh, concept spread to other institutions, commerciality came in. And it, as it happens in many families, the human values came down as the generation changed. Things became more and more commercial. It happens in uh, many instances. In many institutions, in many instances it happens. So, commercialism has definitely crept in. Two things are important. Number one, the students do not have the passion to learn that was there earlier. As you said rightly, having paid one crore, he thinks it's uh, the duty of the institution to pass him. So, if I'm going to pass, why should I study? That's the unfortunate thing. I've heard from you know, Amrita is one of the good institutions we have in South India. Okay. And there is their child. And one of my boys who did his MS, he did his gastroenterology training in Amrita. He told me, sir, teachers are willing to teach, but students are not willing to learn now. Which is very true. Very true. And the curse of this country has been the deemed university, which are totally autonomous. Nobody to question them. If you fail a candidate, you will be held responsible, not the student. The persons at the top will call you, how did you manage to fail the student? Okay. It has come to that extent. <laughs> so while they, while they study, but what they do later, I don't know. What the future holds. Two things are true. One is, medicine is no longer attracting the best of talent, except 
very small group who have that zeal burning inside. We want to be a doctor. They are a true, they are the good number. They are academically good. They study well. They become good doctors. They serve society. That group is there. I always say this. We have 5,000 years of civilization. Can't be taken away by one or two Lalu Prasad as others, with the apologist. There is, there's a group of very good people in this country, no question at all. But the number is coming down gradually. Same thing holds for teachers. We still have, because I have gone, you know, till I retired, a lot of places. They are extremely good teachers, very competent teachers. But for the number of medical schools you have, the percentage has come down considerably. I won't call the whole lot bad. There are extremely good teachers. In Bangalore, I found command hospital run by the Air Force. Has some excellent staff. They're keen to teach. They're keen to learn. They're keen to learn. That's what I found. Some of them are quite young. They want to listen to you because today's youngsters, they think they know more than us. Ego is so high. And they think uh, we belong to the 20th century, 21st century. Uh, these are all like the old this one, Vikram, people come to sleep or something. So, but there are people, good people. But your, right. During your period, uh, I mean, the teachers are legends actually, uh, surgeons especially, and there are so many legends I know of. I'm, I'm sure as as you are a legend, you are so many. You, you, I mean, generation of students remember you, generation because you know the the zeal with which you taught and your classes are so well attended. But that has disappeared now. I mean, actually, frankly, to see, you know, the, the so-called legends in surgery, I think that era is over. God willing, should not be over. That is my prayer every day. What to do? See, society has changed. Materialism has become much bigger, much more important. I am not with this one. I went on a scooter for six years because I couldn't afford a car. And one day, one of the private nursing home owners said, your patients are coming in cars, you are coming in a scooter. I told them, if they look at my vehicle, they need not come to me. They can go to a man with a BML. But today, things have changed. The they pass, they pass, they want a BMW. But they, society, see, when the society has become so corrupt, so materialistic, you can't expect doctors to be angels. I always tell them, you put a halo around us, please take out that halo. I am happy. Society made us angels. We didn't want to be called angels. Society made us angels. Today, society has taken out the time. And violence is unknown. Unknown, totally unknown. Litigation is extremely uncommon. Rajesh, one of the very early case of uh, lap, had a bile leak. I sent her to Krishna Rao. And of course, he does can show that the CBD is perfect. Namadhi is one of those accessory ducts that are leaked and she recovered very well. They were planning to uh, go for litigation. But the lawyer said, I know C.R. Balal very well. You go to any consumer court in Mangalore, you are not going to win against C.R. Balal. He has got such a good name. There cannot be a mistake in surgery if C.R. Balal is operated. Say, please don't go uh, and venture into litigation. That lawyer came and told me. Lawyer came and told me. They are thinking of litigating you. And then I said, I got, because Krishna was kind enough, sent he may not remember, he does scan, I see the picture. And we are sure that uh, CBD is perfectly normal and he does scan. So there is no question of further. But today, at the slightest provocation, one, I think one, uh, that lady committed suicide, you know, no? Archana Sharma in Jaipur. Section 302, because of a BJ politician went and sat and the inspector and said, 302 means uh, planned murder. She committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Unheard of those days. We had a surgeon called Venkat Rao. And uh, people dying in his uh, hands, they used to say, we'll straight away go to heaven because there can't be a better surgeon than Venkat Rao. He has done his best. We, I knew his capacity, but in the layman's hands, Operative, uh, operation to my Venkatra, you are going to recover. If you don't recover, it's your bad luck. That's all. Destiny says that you have to die through Venkatra's hands and be happy, you'll go to heaven. You know, that approach, that has completely gone now. So, how many years have you been in uh, uh, service in, in, say, Manipal, Mangalore? Or no, I have never worked in Manipal. Mm -hmm. The day I passed, I joined KMC. In fact, before the results came, my chief said, I need your help in the OT, there's nobody else. So, uh, 
I did not have a true holiday in the true sense of the word. No honeymoon after marriage also. In fact, we were staying in a rented house. My wife has never slept alone in the house. We had to call the neighbor's children to give her company when he used to go for night emergencies. Poor girl coming from a village, no. With a large family, first time say, you're going out, I'm getting scared, I can't sleep. <laughs> then two boys from neighbors used to come and sleep in the uh, veranda and then this girl used to sleep till I came back. And 33 years I worked in Venlaka, KMC. 1992 I completed 55 years. I was given extension for, uh, as a HOD I stopped. But I was given extension. Then, luckily, the uh, retirement age was uh, increased from 60 to 65. So, there is a, a college called KS Hegde Medical Academy. KS Hegde was the speaker of the Lok Sabha. You know, Kshema is the abbreviated term. His son Vinay Hegde came and called me. Can you come and teach my students? So, after a gap of one year, I joined uh, Kshema in 19. Uh, 98. 2002, officially retired after, but after that I became Professor Emeritus. Worked till 2015, mostly teaching, no operations, but continued my private work. You've been known as a very tough examiner. It's very tough examiner. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I, I mean is, is it that people are scared when yeah, they yeah. hear that you are coming? See, when I go for CME, I always find out fault and People are scared to present cases. In fact, I always tell them, they toss a coin, the loser has to present a case to me. That is the, usual, that is the standard <laughs> I am told. I, you know, that is a, that's, I have that reputation. I tell them always, when I go for a CME, I want to find out what you don't know. When I come as examiner, I want to find out what you know. But that distinction is not well known. To the extent that some surgeon working with my daughter in Minerva, uh, you know, Minakshi, he said, when I heard C.R. Bala is coming examiner, I want to take a drop. But I am told he passed in my hands. <laughs> I was known as a tough examiner, no question at all. I said MS should be earned. And they will fail in fundamentals. Not something if somebody is doing something in Peru or Chile and they don't know, I won't mind. But fundamentals, I, I am very strict. See, those days you have to depend upon clinical science. I will give you an example. 1997, I was in MMC. Hariharan was the internal examiner. With me, I don't know who's other external. And one case, the lump, epigastrin. The student could not distinguish between uh, stomach and liver. And the, uh, uh, not Hari, the other internal examiner said he was a little politically motivated, I don't know, some DMK influence. DMK, I think, was the government at the best, I don't know. Anyhow, he had some political influence. He had a compulsion to pass some students. It is obvious, very, you know them now, the moment you go to the examiner, you will come to know them. So he said, what if it does make? Let us look, look at the ultrasound. I said, very good. Like depend B, we start, we will give, so we'll give the clinical picture, give all the findings and start with the investigation. Let me go, I, do, I have no objection, I said. He, this bladder has never seen an ultrasound picture in his life. You see, I said, look at the ultrasound. He was looking at it as if it's a, one of those wonders of the world. And it became worse. Failure only on clinical findings. By the time they come to management, most of them will pass. But failure used to occur only at clinical uh, levels. Basic fundamental clinical science. I always tell them, because we have Saturday morning, we used to have grand rounds where all the staff members will come. And it's an exercise for the junior teachers also to how to teach the exam, uh, PGs, how to question the PGs. It's a learning process, no? The professor used to make me sit when he was be an MS examiner to learn how to question the PGs. We went through all the rigmarole. I forgot to tell one more point. When you are part of Karnataka University, uh, for your MS exam, there is a teaching session because most of us would become teachers. And one of my colleagues who has done very well in clinicals, Somehow, during t t of course, this, uh, by the time the decision has been taken, but you know, there are finest students who previous days to talk with us in singular. Today they are sitting there as students, and you are going to talk to them. They want to make fun. They want to find out what mistakes. You know, as such, you are sweating inside because they are so close to you. And uh, see, the brain is a funny organ. Sometimes that particular term doesn't come to you at the appropriate time. 
So he could not get the word varicocele. So he went on and on and he said varicose veins of the scrotum. And the student burst out laughing like anything. So he professed that way was very strict. But my son used to take out all those rules. We had four days examine, one day clinical, one day viva, one day x-ray, one day specimen, teaching like that. Full. Rangachari and CKP Manan was the examiner. And CKP Manan was considered the toughest exam in those days. His son Vain is a good friend of mine because he retired. He's the first batch of MC Urology from HS Button Velour. He's my almost, little younger to me. His father was considered uh, he was really tough. He would wait for the proper moment and put one question which half the time you won't know the answer. Rangachari will go, you can almost anticipate the next question because he will go textbook wise, you know. You can almost anticipate they're going to burst. Uh, CKP will fire tadak like that, it will come like a AK-47. Uh, suddenly you're taken by surprise, your conference levels will come down and then you start, you know what happens in PG exam. Yo. Yeah, they're really tough. See, the only case of uh, separated gamma of the clavicle I've seen in my MS exam. He used to bring his own x-rays. I have, uh, you know, one of the osteoclastrum or the calcane. I've never seen one early, never seen. He used to bring such x-rays. Hmm. His own bundle. He won't depend because these x-ray bundles you would have seen, no. So he'd bring his own x-rays. And, uh, no. PG MS exam, operative surgery, they will say, sir, we'll describe uh, modified radical mastectomy. I said, no, we'll start with circumcision. And at the end of that day, I show them in circumcision, they have a couple of things they don't know. And that's, they are prepared. They ask them, they will also talk of uh, hepatic section if you want. But I said, you're not going to hepatic tumor, you're going to circumcision, you're going to hydrocele, you're going to hernia. There should not be complication after these operations. Whereas after a whipple you get a complication, doesn't matter. People accept a complication after a whipple. Now, what is the future of MS general surgery? Very Do you easy. advocate anybody who's... I mean, is it the, that the era of, uh, you know, general surgeons is over? I am absolutely sure India needs general surgeons. Not every patient can afford to move into super specialities where all the facilities are available. At the district level, one should have a competent general surgeon who can identify the disease and if beyond his comprehension, send them to tertiary centers. I believe that he should be capable of putting chest drain, he should be capable of identifying extra dural, if necessary do an emergency bar hole, do emergency procedures. India needs, but unfortunately, you look at the education levels in many other districts are so poor that our people are not willing to go. It's nice for the government to say, go and work in rural areas. But what's the family life? What about children's education? Ideally, we need MS general surgeons, especially at the district level. The craze to do uh, MCH, I don't know. I have no explanation for that. It's an overcrowded market. Now, uh, CTV seats are going vacant right. because everything is taken over by the interventional cardiologist. Right. Nobody wants to do a CTV. The seats are going vacant. One of my students worked for six months and then gave up and came back. But places like, you know, if for example, from Mangalore's developed in a big city, but smaller places, I find my general MS people are doing quite well. That one must know the limitations. The problem in city is, my own associate says, he diagnosed carcinoma stomach, we'll go to gastroenterology. He diagnosed carcinoma rectum, he goes to colorectum. He diagnosed carcinoma kidney, he goes. He says, I am only a post office boy, I am a referring letters. There's hardly any work. Um, you've been a wonderful student, medical student all through. Uh, uh, what would you advise the youngsters who join general surgery as to what should their schedule be? How should they learn their theory? How should they learn their operative surgery? What should be their day like? What is that you do specially which many others didn't to be an excellent student? One is the amount of clinical material we had. We used to go to the hospital morning and evening. See as many patients as possible. Second thing is combined. You have to have one more person with you. Because when you present a case, you don't know your weakness. Today you present a case. He stands in as a critic. Tomorrow, 
he presents a high standard critic. That's the best way to learn. But see as many patients. Fundamental number one, improve your anatomy. Without anatomical background, one can never become a good surgeon. There's no question at all. The quantum anatomy learned today is totally inadequate. They have to study. In fact, I propose when we became a deemed industry, let us have an exam at the end of first year in basic sciences as they do for FRCS. But that was not accepted. Second session I gave was that the private colleges and the corporate hospitals should join together. Just like industry and engineering colleges are joined together. You do complex re uh, resections in your private setup. Whereas Stanley, of course, I am not blaming Stanley, but they are not doing the same quantum of work. If Stanley PGs can uh, close perforation, they can come and watch enough for resection. Your PGs can go to Stanley and close perforation, take out appendices. It's a two-way win-win situation, but ego. I have written my book, I have read somewhere, surgeons are the most egocentric people in the world. Ego is necessary because you can't be Hamlet and say, can I, can I not? Certainly that's not correct for a surgeon. But one should know one's limitation. I think it takes time. You learn your strengths earlier. You learn your limitation later in life. The other thing I found out that, as by Kaurade, you learn to make quick decisions in the OT. That gets reflected in your life activities. You don't dilly dally taking decisions in life also. Your decisions are quick and fast. Right or wrong is different, but you take. Now, advice to postgraduates is keep your anatomy intact, keep updated, see as many patients as possible. There are good teachers, make use of them. You may be with them because you, LGS itself, you get lots of complaints about. Uh, Toxic, no, the word was never present in my day. The word toxic has come much later into the surgical literature. Toxic is the word I hear. But if there's a good teacher, catch hold of them. We had black sheep. One unit was known as Andaman unit in our own hospital. One boy came and told me, Sir, I scored a century today. What? 100 skin stitches I cut, sir, he told me. It was known as Andaman unit. Nobody used to, but I had to post some people there. There were black sheep, no question at all. But there are some good teachers. See, I used to allow students from all college, Friday evening of my teaching day. I'm not boasting. People used to come from faraway places. One hour to one and a half hours of clinical material. I kept my doors open. Let them learn what is there. But I said, no guess. Once you come, you're liable to be questioned just like many. I don't think you'll be guess and laugh at. You're also a sacrifice a lamb to be slaughtered if needed. Be prepared for slaughter. They were, but having gone through the meal, they become tough. I have found my postgraduates once. They openly they said, "We well, finished our first years, etc. Sir, we finished Saturday mornings with you. We are confident of facing any exam anywhere in the world. We have done MCH. A lot of my boys have done MCH urology here under Kanda Swami. Chinna Swami, yeah, Kanda. Chinna Swami. Chinna Swami. MS Plastic Tree there. Mm -hmm. Niranjan is now the Vice Chancellor of uh, University. Mm -hmm. They are all there with the MC plastic here. You are talking about uh, brushing anatomy. See, I joined first year MS. Mm -hmm. How will I brush my anatomy? I worked at anatomy, demonstrated anatomy for one year before I joined my MS. I made my son also do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Went back to the dissection hall and left. Mm -hmm. And complex procedures, still go back. You go back. I, APRs, I used to go back take out request to anatomy and then dissect out and then come back. Unfortunately, that is today, I think virtual reality should help you in that direction. You get the three-dimensional views because we used to go by Grant's anatomy, which used to be two-dimensional photographs. Today, we right. 3D virtual. But application is necessary. See, I with due apologies to all surgeons, anesthetists. Surgeons do not need intelligence. I'm sorry to say that. One need not be highly intelligent to become a surgeon application because ultimately it becomes a routine spinal level your hernias are done at the spinal level 
your brain doesn't come into the picture at all. That's why I'm very careful. Patient on a spinal, sometimes you talk about cricket and all. They'll come back and say, they were discussing cricket and I was getting operated. So I'm very careful. My cousin also tell him, don't bring any extraneous matter because they're under spinal, they can listen to In fact, I still remember one patient came from the periphery, tendon cut under local. And the patient says, the doctor is going on saying, I can't get the tendon. I can't. <laughs> this man is hearing that. <laughs> so you have to be very careful when you talk, you know, on the OT, extremely careful. Application necessary. To catch out the good teachers, there are. Maybe you have to move around. Make that extra effort. You want to be a good, I think if you are a good human being, automatically become a good surgeon. I am 100% sure about it. Is much more careful. When students pass their MS and come and touch my feet, I tell them only one advice. Look at the patient. Calibrate all the findings. If the same findings are seen in your younger sister or your brother or your mother, will you operate? Answer comes yes, go and operate. Answer comes no, don't operate. This is a standard advice I've been given to my students. Automatically you'll be much more careful in not operating. It takes time to learn when not to operate. No? So these youngsters, whenever, uh, you know, in LGS, they keep asking me, Sir, if I go to the institution, what are my cutting chances? If I go to other, that institution, what are my cutting chances? What is your opinion about these cutting chances? They are secondary. A person can learn over a period of time all safe procedure. It may not be fast, maybe slow, but they will be... Ultimately, over a period of time, most people who take up surgery become safe surgeons. It takes time. Uh, working in a government setup gives you more chances because uh, human life in a government hospital, unfortunately, is not as expensive. The cheapest thing in this country is the human life. Cheapest. I'm sorry to say that. So you can take more liberties. But private setup is difficult. Today, the problem is. Too many medical schools focused in a small area. Mangalore, we are 10, and now I'm told there are three more colleges coming up. Mangalore. Whereas the catchment area is shrinked. Medicare is a college, Kandor is a college, Kasukot is a college, North Kandor is a college. So they no, need not come. And the private setup has improved like anything. And today, see, compared to many other states, South Kandor, the economy levels are much better. The dire, because I have gone to Orissa, I have gone to parts of Bihar and all, the dire poverty you see there, you don't, not only, at the same time you don't see that uh, the super rich in the metro, you don't see them also. One house having a dozen cars and all, uh, only Mercedes Benz and uh, Rolls, uh, whole of South Kenya, I think there are only three Rolls Royce if I remember right. So there are ultra rich you don't find, but the average economy is fairly okay. So many of them, come to private hospital, we have what's called general ward, you know, almost like a general hospital setup. The charge, charge is reasonable, they are able to manage. But problem is on both sides. The number of teachers who want to teach has come down. Number of students who aspire to be good surgeons and work for it. Basically today, Indians want money, but they are not willing to put in the hard work. It doesn't apply only to surgeons, I am talking to Indian. I was talking to the IIT professor, he was telling me, he was an IIT student. He says there are also standards that come down like anything. Olden days, the stalwart teachers in IIT, the present day, same problem as in medical school. We were flying together and I came to the IIT professor. So that the same complaint. But here we are dealing with human life, that's why the problem becomes more acute. Learn your fundamentals, learn anatomy, see as many patients as possible. Don't bother too much of uh, hands on. Automatically, a period of time, you can learn. You work in an institution, come with you, Radha Krishna will be very happy. I have my friend Lakshman, you must be knowing him. Yeah. Lakshman is very, we are like brothers. In fact, all the quiz work he used to do. We are called Rama Lakshman, and you are my, I am mm -hmm. Rama Krishna, so he used to call us brothers only. So people like him are willing to train and work with them for one year. Maybe, see, I have worked free. One year I worked free. I said, I want to teach, I can't um, survive without teaching. So college said, we'll give on whatever designation, call me. Friday evening, I'm going to take postgraduates for classes. I'm going to do that, I said. 
So level play, I also don't know what cases they bring. And they know my penchant for good cases. They go to ortho, they'll bring some nerve injury. These boys have never seen nerve injury. They go and bring a chondrosarcoma pelvis. Good, I said, more the better. It's a good exercise for me also. My great self also will work when I talk to first graduates. So it's a good exercise. One of the uh, commonest uh, questions we keep getting in learning general surgery is that after completing MS general surgery in the present era with not much of uh, operative experience, um, where can we learn surgery? See, where will we start our career? Compulsory, they are supposed to do senior residency now. Only thing is, the choices are limited. They have to do real diligent search. How they many years? Minimum one year. In a good unit like Lakshman or somebody else. Maybe at the end of which you get trained in a particular branch. If that branch doesn't, uh, sort of you don't like it, you may have to move to some other place. It's absolutely necessary that they spend some time, at least one to two years working with a good surgeon who wants to teach, that is important. He wants to impart knowledge. He will guide you. That setup is not easy to find, but you have to search for that. Today, jumping on to a hospital and then thinking that I know everything is absolutely dangerous. And what happens today, the background we have makes the surgeons very hesitant. First question you ask yourself is, maybe to all branches of medicine, is this blighter going to sue me? That's the first question that comes to you. So it becomes defensive. You don't want to take even 1% risk. Ultimately, patients lose. They are the losers, but they are not aware of it. Things have come to that stage now which was there in America maybe some decades ago, has already come to our country. So my advice is search for an institution where most often in the private setup, not in the medical setup. Medical college setup is the den of politicians, I'm sorry to say. Ego one and each unit thinks they are the best unit in the whole world. The relation between the units is unfortunately not very sound in most places. Otherwise, I tried my level best to sort of divide. Let us focus on the abdomen, head and neck. I totally failed. I totally failed. That is, they go, if he can do a thyroid, I can do a thyroid. In fact, we have a couple of fellowships in a state chapter. I was invited for a one particular place, one week long. That HOD said, what can CR Bhattal teach, which I cannot do. And they told me, please don't come. I said, it's happy. I was, I was losing my practice. When I come for teaching, I lose my because we have to depend upon practice. Colleges to give me 4,000 rupees. My bread, butter, jam came from my practice only. But those institutions say, we don't want you. So they have to search. MS degree does not uh, give them enough exposure to independently practice as we used to do in the olden days. That factor has to be accepted. They have to learn. I'm not talking cutting only. I'm saying oral management. As I said earlier, when not to operate? When to operate? What is the best operation? Know your limitations. If something you cannot do, better not venture. We are forced to do emergency. I did emergency lobectomy because I could not, you know, there's no, there's no thoracic surgeon and the patient was in a position, not a position to go elsewhere. So, we had to, otherwise, there are institutions, but search for them. See, uh, again, off-print, South is much better place than the, compared to the North. Institution-wise, human beings-wise, character-wise, in general, I'm saying, South is much better placed. North, levels of education are poor. Power is focused in very few hands, as a result of which, much more nonsense goes on than North compared to South. So students in the North, I'm surely, suffer much more than students in the South. When they come, to see, unfortunately, when you go to the North, you're called a Madrasi. I may be a Kannadiga, I may be a Keralite, I may be an Anurite, but you're called that derogated from Madrasi. Professors ask questions in Hindi in Dependi exam, knowing fully well that you may not be very conversant in Hindi. You answer in English, again they ask questions in Hindi. So, the South is far better place. 
people trained in south i'm sure are much better of course forget about the uh, cities like bombay pune i'm talking about average now lots of rural medical is come up in smaller places the people coming out of those institution the quality is extremely poor they have to move around search for good places get trained you know word of mouth i'm sure radha krishna name is spread uh, quite uh, quite a big uh, area and come okay, i'm sure they come flocking to you you choose people work with them for one or two years gain confidence and then move into the real world ultimately the real world is your test and be satisfied what you have unfortunately as gandhi ji said there is enough for one's needs not for the greed if you follow the principle i am sure surgeons will be happy there is enough illness there is enough appendix enough hepatitis enough hernias you don't have to do tap tap and all every patient you can do a straight forward anybody can do a simple extraction with enough surgical knowledge a unilateral extraction good enough over the years you may have gathered lot of friends very good friends is it true sir you have, you have many friends uh, uh, i am a basically a loner right basically i am a loner but i have a few friends you know unless they fit into a particular level length i do not uh, develop friendship mm. yeah, i am a total tea totaler and a vegetarian that rules me out of many situations i was a very active lion for 3 decades mm-hmm. in fact my wife was much more active and after she passed away because of that i left lion because when i went there i used to be reminded of her and unfortunately i used to come back more depressed because she had a, she was a sort of a born leader this girl has some of her traits this granddaughter mm. and there is a mini meetings of like all the advanced speaker will be speaking one fellow comes and talks about the small scale industry in, who is interested in causing so they like their own mini meeting we had 200 members in alliance club of mangalore so it's very active alliance so i got some very good friends outside the medical line a good surgical friends but basically mm-hmm. i am alone mm-hmm. but some of the famous uh, surgical friends you have and who sort of uh, influenced your thinking certainly yes i told you know professor warrior had a lot of uh, professor mp pai but for him i would have to be and we can say him dr yogesh pai is no more he went to uk and then he passed very recently up to 10 pm he used to take classes for us 6 to 10 is teaching is it 10 in the night mm no practice ha huh. only he was a simple man one walks all car he put us in his car take us to a uh, you know we are lot of open ground those now it's all filled up open grounds uh, fresh air because he mangalore is a town of hills and valleys hills and valleys so one hill will take up and uh, sit and discuss till 10 pm in the night and they are very good friends mm-hmm. uh, shake uh, La- mohan rao plastic surgeon you mohan rao memorial hospital mm-hmm. very very close friends right i have such good friends teachers yes yeah sir uh, what is the secret of your fitness uh, genes <laughs> <laughs> I never put on a gram of weight until I stopped practicing. Then I started. I started walking at the age of seventy. Till then, I, my work used to burn out all my gal- calories. Mm-hmm. And uh, ex, uh, my father lived up to ninety-one. Mm-hmm. Uncle lived ninety-nine. One uncle is ninety-seven. One aunt is ninety-three. Mm-hmm. But for my balancing, for rest of them, I am okay. Gray right. cells are still functioning. That is most important. <laughs> send you are a very sort of uh, frugal eater of yeah, your always, ta- taste throughout, of, throughout, all through your life throughout my life i have been a very poor eater mm-hmm. very poor eater why that i don't know mm-hmm. nothing other food was never you know sort of uh, craving for food or asking my wife to prepare this prepare this never whatever she prepared happily eat and say it's very good nice although it sometimes is uh, always enjoyed whatever she so never demanded that uh, prepare this because for 6 month like a typical indian wife she'll wait for me for lunch i said this is nonsense because we is operate till 5 pm in the evening and then after 6 month she gave up i said be an indian wife it doesn't you can break this rule comfortably you know those days today wives will say go to you will we will cut ourselves our fitness is more important <laughs> and you are much of a family man you are very, very much a family because i lost my mother at the age of 1 year and was brought up my by grandparents 
and we lived in a large family with cousins. We had a cricket team only of comprised our own family members. Came to Mangalore, my uh, cousin sister, my mother's eldest sister's daughter lost both her parents. So I brought up my grandparents. So the cousins formed a very, very close relationship. And later on what happened, I was the, you know, but for those two uncles, rest of the family, I was the only medical man. So even today, I've got about 30 relatives in Bangalore. So they call me, I have to find out who is the good specialist, reliable, because city reliability is the most important thing now, and direct them to go to a proper place. So that way, and uh, we have two temp family temples, which is, you know, the source of income comes from the family and whatever the devotees give. We were renovated that, but we didn't go around and from the public saying that we are building a temple. Whatever they have given, we have taken. The rest of the cost we have borne. So that way, I am very much a family man. I am fond of children. All these grandchildren are very fond of me. Mm. Maintain relationships. And how did, uh, what is the amount of spirituality in you that, uh, you know, is it there from your younger days or after you retired, you spend time no, on spirituality? No, no. Right from very younger days. How does it help you? One person called it escapism. See, there's a temple, Durga Parmesh temple in a place called Katil, is about uh, 20 kilometers from Angra. It's a very famous uh, temple. And uh, my grandfather used to uh, go there when I was very young, even before electric current and lights came, old oil lamps. And when I became a, you know, when I had uh, a surgeon and started getting stressed about patients, I had seen two surgeons going to alcohol in the evening. I won't mention them, name, their names. I used to go to this temple and go and tell that lady, madam, it's your show. If some people have to go out of this world through my hand, these are my these words, it is your decision. If some people have to survive, you take the credit. I used to come back with absolute peace of mind. A friend of mine called it escape. I said, maybe right. I was uh, in fact, uh, off print. When I lost my wife and my son-in-law, a person called, asked me, what is the secret of resilience? I said, religion. I believe that God has his own uh, way of doing things. If you are doomed to suffer through certain things, you have to go through that. Astrologer, after my retirement, said, you will become much more famous. I laughed at her. I said, I will retire. But I got my honorary fellowship, a ward in uh, uh, the Hospital has been named after me. and. Uh, Lifetime achievement from the ASI, I believe God's gifts. Because one, I one principle, because they asked me to apply for Padma Shri Rajya, so I said, I will not apply for anything. Whatever God has given me, I am a contented man. BC Roy Award, I would have got long, long time ago. Best Surgical Teacher Award. 32 applications, I said, thank you. I don't apply for BC Roy. No Padma, I knew all the... Peja Swami was very close to Lal Kija Advani and uh, I was the I college trust, the building I was the president. One word the Swamiji, Lal uh, Advani would have given me a Padmash. I said no. In fact, when I got my lifetime achievement award, a close friend of mine rang me up and said, congratulate, because this is not given by the government, so it must be good, therefore he said, these are words he used. I will never reply for anything myself. I am a contented man. How do you spend time in the evenings? What is your What are your hobbies? I am avid reader. What I, do you read? I read fiction, non-fiction, everything. See, when I was young, my uncle was working in HL. He is one of the first design engineers in the whole country. He joined the National Laboratory. He passed to the Second World War from Gindi. Condensed course. At the end of three years, he let out because the war was on. Then he went to UK, got trained in aviation design. He joined HL. Because I am sorry to say that, because Sacred Thread, he did not become the chairman. Of course, that's a different story. Anyhow, so he used to bring a lot of Canada novels. When I came to Mangalore, my grandfather retired. He was an avid reader of Earl Stanley Gardner, uh, Perry Mason, and all that. So I caught on to that. I read a lot. In between patients, I'll sit and read. And I'll tell you how it benefited me. This Seba Symposium, have you seen them? Yeah. They are really, those days, they were treasures. Netters, Frank Netter. Whole country used to get 300 copies printed in Switzerland. Mangalore used to get three copies. One senior surgeon passed away. 
the rep came and said, you're the only surgeon I find reading between patients. So I'm going to give you SIBA symposium, but please don't divulge this fact because I'll get firing from the seniors. <laughs> I was the junior most there. So I got SIBA symposium only because of that reading habit. I in between patients, sometimes forget where I read. And the li library fellow becomes so close, we have no penalty for me. I can keep a book for three months. After coming here, there's a couple in our DRI. Her, her name is Radhika. They have about 3,000 books. The children are America. And then uh, they used to lend out books, uh, rent 30 rupees per book. You can keep it for uh, 10 days. They relax the rule uh, for an old man like me. He'll come to Kilpok twice a week. He'll uh, pick up. Once I got Kindle, I stopped that. Now I read from Kindle. And then I'm very fond of Carnatic music. I can. Uh, I was the president of the association and I know all this, Sanjay Subra, everybody by single name, I've gone to their houses. Jayashi, I met uh, Soumya and then uh, Gayatri Venkatragan, like, she calls me uncle, I visit her house very frequently in West Mambulam. Then Narayan uh, Neveli, Madangist, so all those people are even in Bangalore, very close friends. Do you attend the Ka December Kacheris? I used to, but now this, uh, yeah, I know because Nalli, okay, you know, in fact, surprising. Nalli's Mercedes came home one day. So, people here, Chennai, people know me as surgeon. So, they came and asked my daughter, what is Nalli's surgical problem that your father... She said, no, 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 music is very common. <laughs> he gave, sends me a pass. He, well, what, I, I did a gallbladder on him. Oh, I'll cook really? some shit. Uh, mm. Because he came to... Because Music is the only thing that brought us together. He is very fond of me. So he, come, he has come down to Mangalore, he came, came home, we had lunch together, and I used to visit him now, of course, all this. Otherwise, I used to have a lot of concerts here. Gayatri, he calls me uncle. Gayatri, as the first time when she came, her classmate has married one Konkani fellow in Mangalore. So she wanted to visit. So I took her. After that, she started calling me uncle. I gone to her house, she has come home. And she has sung for us three, tenth year, fifteenth year, twenty three times she has sung for us. Gayatri is a very good singer. She sings very well. And Dong her husband is a ophthalmologist. Shankar Hospital, I think. Venkatragon. So your mother tongue is Kannada or Tulu? No, that's something surprising. We are Tulu speaking Shivali Brahmins. By about the nineteen forties, it became fashionable for the upper class uh, Brahmins to talk in Kannada. And uh, the doctors, the lawyers, they thought they are, you know, speaking in Kannada. And we speak as, as we write. That's why it's called Bangalore Kannada. Whereas Bangalore Kannada has a lot of slangs and all. You don't find such slangs in our uh, South Kannada Kannada. But my wife was very particular that children should learn Tulu. So even with their granddaughter, I speak in Tulu only. They, brother, sister, they talk in Tulu. With me, they talk in Kannada. But uh, basic is... And the Tulu is just like the, I think even here it must be the Brahmin Tulu is slightly different from Tulu spoken by the other caste. I don't know whether it's there in Tamil, I have no idea. It's there, yeah. yeah. Some more Sanskritized terms, Brahmin Tulu. Yeah. No, but uh, you read in Kannada, uh, you have any affiliation uh, uh, to, really. to Kannada literature? I used to read a lot. Now I stopped almost get the books. It was stories problem. I have read, I have read all current, everybody I read. Mm -hmm. Older generation, I read all the novels mm -hmm. regular because my grandmother knew Kannada, my grandfather English, so he used to bring Kannada and English novels both. In between, I used to read both novels. I used to. Have you made enough money to call it enough? See, I always looked at money as what is needed. At the time of retirement, I felt this is enough for me, and. Uh, uh, in, again, not to, to be a detail. When you see our temple is 600 years old, built during the Achutara uh, time of the Vijaya dynasty, one uh, the central portion is completely granite, the roof, everything is granite. Peripheral portion, of course, my grandfather built uh, mud and uh, tiles. And central portion, uh, fam family members contributed one crore. We finished and we used the same stones without uh, changing one single stone. Same stones were replaced. And we could only foundation, of course, there was a, a granite, a big granite and a concrete foundation. Rest of it, same thing. 
we wanted to complete the next stage. We had kept 50 lakhs separate for that. COVID came. Now the cost escalated to crores. Labor cost has gone up like anything. My cousin brother is now the Ejiman of our Ballar family. We have the family, Tharwad house in Kerala, like that the family house. We have a deity given by Madhvachar himself. We are Madhvachar, Madhva Brahmins. And what happened? For him to walk from Krishna temple to his place, he has to pass through our uh, area. And we are supposed to have given a glass of milk and a cow. So in return, uh, Lakshmi Narayana Vikra is there in our family house. And once a year, I, when I was young enough, I used to do the puja. In, I know the puja, rituals, everything. So, the next question came, after COVID, may our project again went up. What to do? Then I told, uh, not to be edited, I told my cousin brother, I'll anyway put 20 lakhs, you put 20 lakhs, we had 50 lakhs remaining. 10 lakhs may come from outside, we'll go ahead. One and a half crores has come from outside. We didn't expect it. And I said, my children do not need my money. Today, even they don't allow me to spend even for my medicine. They, I give them, of course, sometimes present that this and all. But uh, many people think, you know, Mangalore and all, they think I have stashed crores and crores, which is not true at all. I built a beautiful house, five bedroom house. Of course, now three of them. My son has only one daughter. She is. She has a gold medal, as I told she has taken up MD psychiatry. She wanted a neurosurgery. I said, do that, but don't get married, I told her. <laughs> <laughs> She's a gold medal. So what she is a topper. She has a CET straight rank, she was number two. She missed the first rank by one mark. And throughout she has been a topper and well behaved girl, Bharatanatyam. This lady came, Priyadarshini Govind came for her. In fact, that was thanks to Nalli. A rank of Padma Subramaniam. She said, you must give me three lakhs for my foundation. Priyadarshini said, Doctor, you must give me as many temples as possible. I said, my pleasure. So I took her to Katil and uh, our own family temple. She was so happy. She had lunch in our place, typical Udupi lunch, served on a banana leaf in a family house and sitting down. She was very happy, very contented. So when my granddaughter here, this girl's elder sister, I called her. She thought I'm calling to Mangalore. She said, I have to think about it. Then I told her, Madam, it's in Kilpok only, our uh, uh, Bhavan. Oh, it's in Chennai. Sure, I'll come. She and Nalli came for Nalli also was kind enough to come for She and Nalli came for her Arangitra. That's all. God's contacts are there. So what are your regrets in life? In other words, if you're born again, how will you be any different? I have been a very, throughout my life, uh, I have been a very contented man. In fact, when I had a heart attack, 2008, my cardiac asked me, are you an A-type strong person? I said, no, I accepted whatever God has given me with the stress of my loss of my family that has brought this. I, told. I, I have no regrets in life. I wish my wife would have lived a long, longer time. I never expected my son-in-law to die so young. But I have taken it as God as a plan for each one of us. And I never thought I'd spend my evening of my life in Chennai with my grand. Because Bangalore, I would have been attending social functions every week. Somebody had invited me to preside over this meeting, that meeting. I was a very active lion, Brahmin Association president and Sangeet Parishad president. I'm missing all those concerts there. I'm going the 30th year. They adjusted to my dates now, 23rd of April. We are completing 30 years of existence. I am going to Bangalore for the 30th inaugural. Ritwik Raja is coming from Chennai to sing for us. Okay. I arranged only Ritwik Raja. So, to tell you that if you are born, I would like to be a teacher. I may not be a surgeon, but I would like to be a teacher. Wonderful, sir. It's uh, such a pleasure talking to you. And uh, we hope we'll meet again on another occasion for another interview. And wishing you a lot of lot many years of happiness and health. Thank you so much for spending time with us. No, no, I think I enjoyed it. I always say that I am very selfish individual in this part aspect. I enjoy this kind of talks much more. My children know that because nobody objected. When you call, nobody said don't go. They, they know I enjoy these kind of sessions. And even, you know, when you called me first time, Suma used to do, I had no idea about Zoom, nothing. She'll set up everything and Papa press this button. That's all I should do, nothing else beyond. I got my first computer at the age of 70. 
at the age of 75 they gave me uh, this one uh, iPad iPad now of course I gone obsolete I got a new iPad which I use pr primarily for music uh, my YouTube gives me enough and more music to keep me happy I can spend hours I, I never felt lonely in my life I, especially after my wife passed away only thing is, night should be a problem I said I not to be discussed Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I must thank you. It's, it's been a real pleasure uh, to to meet uh, with you, madam. And, no, really, you've gone out of the way to be good to me. That's all I'm it's, saying. It's, it's, it's a pleasure. No, no. <laughs> the present age, in general, they think they are all what these old people know. What is. They may talk about old things. And I always, I've written that also. My grandchildren, the first one, tell me, Ajja, I heard this story earlier, Ajja. They always tell me, because you tend to repeat, no? They'll say, I heard this story, Ajja. You don't have to tell us again. <laughs> Same thing happened in states. Uh, except for Las Vegas, I now never stayed in a hotel. Students or relatives. So, the first few, okay, they were very happy. Then the same story got repeated. Then they will go to sleep. You're going to tell the same story with the student because many of the senior students, you know. It's a pleasure. I would be born, I would be a teacher. I would like to be definitely a teacher. No question at all. The joy you get in passing, imparting knowledge, I don't there's nothing that comparable to that. To see those young birds flowering like that and see people have reached, you know, case it, Cherian is my student, K. M. Cherian, and then uh, so many. That Sampangi who comes, you know, a politician, he is a S. V. Sampangi. He is my classmate. He was one of the big contributors, one of the parties. I don't know. He is with all the presidents. Other day, he is with the House of Lords in London. He puts a photograph. Pravasi Divas. He was with Narendra Modi. That kind of politician. A lot of people. I have enjoyed it honestly. Whether it's been useful to you, you have to do You two people. <laughs> you are the judges. Would like to meet again and then you know have some more conversations. Certainly. Certain time, any your time, time permits. Anytime. You are most welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah.